Um, some 28 years ago, um, a man called Scott Peck, Scott Peck, wrote a book called The Road Less Travelled. I presume some of you have read that book. And the strange thing is it remained on the bestseller list for ages, months and months, even though the very first line in the book, the very opening line was, life is hard. Life is hard. And life indeed is hard, and it has been said that life is tragedy, and that in some ways, in some ways it is. And in the Gospel this evening, um, we have a choice. There are two paths we can take. Um, we can take the path recommended by Jesus, or we can take the path the apostles were on until they were hopefully uh, informed better by Jesus. Now, what do I mean by the two parts? Well, let's look at um, the first path. Jesus takes I want to explain a little word there, a little phrase before we carry on. There's a phrase um, in the Gospel this evening. Jesus refers to himself as the Son of Man. Well, that's not a very good interpretation of the original Greek or Hebrew. And so we'll, we'll change the Son of Man to the human one. because That makes more sense. And so... We, Jesus refers to himself as a human one, as, and so he's totally human, just like any of us here at Mass this evening. And he's showing us the way to live. And he says, do not be surprised if you find pain and suffering in your life. That is part of life. For most of us have, in many ways, refused that especially those of us who live in this part of the world. We have very high expectations of life. Now, if you go to um, a third world country or you go to parts of Africa and many other parts of the world, you'll find people, very poor people, living in maybe terrible conditions, and you'll find that those people more often smile than a lot of people in this part of the world. Strange to say, that might be very ironic, but it's a fact. Now, what, what do I mean by when I say that we have chosen a different path, most of us? I use the, words, the word us, because I always include myself. I'm not talking just to you. I need to look at this too. By that I mean... We like to be in control. We like the idea of power. We always think we're better than somebody else. We want more all the time. A lot of us never seem to be happy with what we have. And it's more, more, more money all the time. And that's what motivates a lot of people in this part of the world. And please don't uh, deny that if the cap fits where it um, that that can be very true of, of a lot of a lot of people just just think along with me think along with me and see yeah yeah am I a, am I a bit like that yes yeah we live in this part, part of the world we are a bit like like that and not only do we do that but we train our young people to, to be the same. And so a lot of young people today grow up with great expectations of life. And if you have great expectations, you're going to be disappointed. You are. You're going to find you're going to be often disappointed. People, people will come to talk to somebody like me and they'll often begin off by saying, I'm very disappointed with somebody, with, with maybe somebody in the family, might be a son or a daughter, might even be a parent or a husband 
or a wife, and I'm very disappointed with him or her. Why are you so disappointed with that person? And they'll say to me, because they didn't live up to my... I expected them to do better, and they didn't. What right have you or I to put expectations on anybody? And the answer is, we do not have that right. So why are you disappointed? Because my expectations were not fulfilled. Look at yourself. You've always got, <coughs> excuse me, you've always got to come back to yourself. <coughs> <coughs> and a good little um, phrase on which to build <coughs> a very good phrase on which to build your life is in the back of your mind or in your subconscious have this phrase life is not all about me I am about life changes the whole your whole outlook on life so many people go around with the idea life is all about me no it's not you're all about life and so why are you um, so overwhelmed or overcome when things go wrong in your life, when unexpected things happen that maybe you, you, weren't, you didn't foresee? Why are you so upset? That's life. That's what Jesus is telling us in the Gospel to today. He's also telling us, just like he, the path he chose, You've got to go d down before you can come up. That is life. And unless you have gone down and come up, you'll never really mature. You talk to anybody who um, is in recovery, whatever from, from you know, somebody uh, belonging to Alcoholics Anonymous who is recovering, they are so wise and they're so mature because they know what it is like to be down there and come up. And suffering, pain, tragedy, the unexpected, all those things are an integral part of life. There is no escape from them. It's a part and parcel of life. That's what Jesus is saying to us in the Gospel today. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Because you'll find, if, if by some chance, and it is some chance, if you go through life and you never have any kind of a problem, you'll never really taste joy. You'll never really, really taste real joy joy. You might be happy for a few moments now and again, but you'll never experience joy. There's nothing like the joy of when you have been through some bad situation and you come out of it and there's a mini resurrection. There, there, you find real, real joy. Real joy. Um, Saint, or oh, she's not a saint, but um, blessed Julian of Norwich had a lovely phrase, beautiful phrase. She says, her phrase is, first there is the fall, and then the recovery from the fall, and all is the mercy of God. Beautiful phrase. First of all, there is the fall. And then the recovery from the fall and all is the mercy of God. And when you go through that experience, you know what joy is all about. I just want to conclude on a little, um, a little paragraph I found on this 
It's, it's a lovely little thing, so I'll repeat it twice. Um, and it is this. I walked a mile with pleasure. She chatted all the way. But ne'er a thing I learned on all the way in all she had to say. I walked a mile with sorrow, ne'er a word, said she, but oh, how much I learned from all, said she. I walked a mile with pleasure, she chatted all the way. Oh, but I never, I never learned a thing from all she had to say. I walked a mile with sorrow, ne'er a word did she, said she, but oh, how much I learned when sorrow walked with me.